Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is another one of those getting ready for winter videos. And we have had a much requested topic on um, my winter lights and how I do this and um, why I do this and what spectrum of lights and all kinds of questions come up. Well, to start with, I want to say that, um, you know, all the, the water, the overhead misting and everything is off for the year first. Uh, water and electricity don't mix. I also have these guys on GFI breakers. Those are ground fault interrupting breakers. So if they sense any kind of water present, they will trip very, very easily for my own safety. Uh, the way these are set up, it's still um, not overly safe and I still don't totally recommend this. So as much as I'm showing you this, don't try it at home. Um, I've done this for years. It, it's worked good for me. The bottom shelf, and I'll get to all the um, details in a sec, but I want to just talk more about this, the safety precautions that I've, I've had or that I do first. The bottom shelf where the lights are under the trays, you'll notice there's plastic vinyl down here which forms like a roof. So if anything gets watered up top here, it doesn't just fall down onto the lights. The lights are in, a, in spots that don't get wet, they don't get sprayed with water. And as I say, the misting system is off. It is humid in here. It's not humid enough to affect electricity though. It's, nothing is dripping from anything. The only time you get um, dripping water when it's humid is if you bring something cold in from outside and you put it in here, then it becomes humid and drippy and condensates. But for the most part, lights in the greenhouse are no different than lights in any tropical location. Humidity doesn't really affect them unless it's dripping on them or in them or around them. If you've ever taken your camera from outside into a greenhouse or from your air-conditioned hotel room outside in the tropics, it steams up quite quickly. And um, that would be a case where even the innards would, would get humidity in them and then there could be some cause for some damage. So now that we've gone over the disclaimer of don't try this at home, kids, I don't um, really feel like doing this video to get um, a bunch of flack from people. So I know in the past people have not... Um, some people love my lighting, some people hate my lighting. So anyways, my lighting itself is um, just supplemental lighting. You can see how bright it is. This is a cloudy day, but you can see the lights. It's so bright it doesn't even focus. It's just nothing but backlighting. Um, when the sun is fully out, the roof is nice and bright and I get full spectrum natural light all winter long. Most plants don't need the artificial lights. I do them for... Um, some of the lower shelves and especially in the back half of the greenhouse because the north wall obviously doesn't have any sunshine shining in it. It just relies on light coming in from the sky. So even through here you can almost see like blue sky up there. It's kind of tinted. But um, anyways, I do a few different ways. The one old standby is the fluorescent shop lights. Four foot lights with um, 32 watt bulbs in. They're just a normal daylight spectrum. If I can't get daylight, I use cool white. I get these things at Home Depot and Walmart and stuff like that. There's nothing special about them at all. Um, these guys here, again, are just the compact fluorescent coil lights. Um, the ones that are replacing incandescent lights these days. This size is 23 watts. I get it at Walmart. Uh, the tin foil is just lightly taped on there to reflect the light to keep it from going in my eyes. Um, it works quite well. These bulbs don't get hot, so I can touch this very easily. It's not like it's too, too hot. There's some warmth to it. And what I do with them is I buy one of these Y adapters that screws in. I think we're really zoomed in. No, nope, not really. I buy one of these Y adapters, and then each bulb goes into them. This year I tried something new. I put Y adapters into the Y adapters. These have been running for hours, and they're they're cold to the touch. So... No worries there, they don't pull a whole lot of electricity. This whole um, unit in front of us is about 75 watts and less actually. So then the Ys tee off and just provide even more light. So that's kind of nice. Again, they're just the normal daylight spectrum because I do get natural light in here. So I think it would be different if you were relying completely on artificial light for the whole time. This is just really for the deepest, darkest days of winter. Um, another thing I have done, I did that whole Y trick where I put a Y and a Y right up here. So it went from two to four. These bulbs, again, are normal daylight bulbs. They um, are 45 watts and they're equivalent to 200 watts because you know how the, the 
compact fluorescent is brighter than the, the normal wattage. So they rate it as each one of those is worth 200 watts. So it's essentially there's 800 watts of light shining down there, although there's actually under 200 watts of light. And with this running, this is still cold to the touch. So it's nice. And this is um, not too warm, pretty cool as well. Being it's tin foil, it just reflects down. I have done some testing on it and the tin foil on really does reflect light down further when you have a light meter underneath you get um you get more light going down this one i ran right down the side because it was like blasting in my eyes and giving me a headache um so i use these for mo mainly my slow growing carnivorous plants that are small um carnivorous plants are also hanging up above and they just get natural light and they were not going to have any lights this winter and they do just fine but it's just the ones that are a little bit lower or tucked under the shelves that gets the lighting. This was new this year. I just um, discovered these. So I use the same Y. And then I found these here. So hopefully I can, um, I'll be able to unplug it. No, I won't be able to unplug it. I don't have enough hands. I should have had this in a tripod. Anyways, this adapter is just a straight plug-in that plugs into the extension cord with a socket on it. And again, I got these at Canadian Tire, just your local like hardware store. So I went with just a socket that plugs into a normal um, extension cord with a Y on it. And it gave me this sort of like chandelier of four compact fluorescent bulbs just over um, my seedlings and stuff like that. A couple more over my um, cephalotus. They, they like the cooler days. They like the winter. They, they kind of go into a rest period, but they don't want it too, too dark. But these guys get lows down into the low 50s or the low teens if you're um, working in celsius there and this light is just enough you can see um, some color in the pictures still the newer pictures are green but the older pictures are red um, i'm not trying to get terrific color this time of year i'm just trying to maintain them the helis on the other hand they um, seem to really color up nicely under these bulbs the new pictures come out nice color um, have to watch out that they don't get actually burnt like that guy there is red on one side and I bet you he's green on the other from the light itself so anyway that is all it is it is really really simple keep in mind this is just supplemental lighting um, it's just on for it's normally on for a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the evening to extend the daylight hours that these plants normally get anyways um, once our light gets below 10 hours which happens around Halloween the plants do start to slow down so this just kind of extends their their growth period a little bit and again it's only for the plants that I really want to um, grow up faster I've never noticed anything die or not picture from lack of light in the greenhouse here in the winter time that's why I'm not too worried about all the stuff hanging up in the um, the higher levels and these guys that are hanging up in the higher levels now may not be there in the summertime because it's so bright and hot up there. Stuff kind of gets moved down. But for now, they just get tucked up so they get as much light as possible. Sorry for filming this with the lights on. I know it kind of reflects off the camera. Um, but I wanted to show you to you in action. And that's what it's like. Here's um, another shop light down here. Just with Mastivalias and Draculas and some Miltoniopsis under it for now. Um, I put a lot more lights in this year than I did last year. I found some of the crevices and stuff like that did get darker. Like the Mastivalias really, or the Dracula sat in the dark last year. So this year, they're going to get a little bit of light. And um, who knows, they may just get like an increase and I may put another Y out here. And they may have two bulbs each by the time um, winter really sets in. We get a good three months of pretty dark days. Um, so... For those three months, they may get a little bit more of a boost. But anyways, nothing special for the lighting. Um, remember safety first. No different, I guess, than having a, a light over a reptile tank. Other than people get kind of freaked out about the humidity in here. But like I say, nothing's dripping. The plants themselves aren't wet. Um, it's no different than having lights on in, in a tropical or a humid area. So... I hope you like this video, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. My Velosas are out of the freezer today because they're um, enjoying the cool, nice um, day out here. I think it's about 79 in the greenhouse today. But here's the lights for the Velosa, or for the grow chamber as well. 
this thing does need lights um, in particular it would just be too dark in there too shadowed all the time so this has equivalent there's 150 watts on this each one of these is worth 200 watts of light so it's it's like having 600 watts of light over this so it's quite bright in there but um, they're not even in there right now so anyways thanks again guys bye for now